wanted to be an artist as long as I can actually remember. I remember when I was like 11 years old, uh, I knew I wanted to become an artist. I just didn't know exactly what kind of artist I wanted to be, of course. And for some time I actually wanted to be a composer, musical composer. Uh, but uh, I wasn't good enough at the piano lessons, so uh, when that failed, I had decided to become a, a visual artist instead. Uh, and I always liked to draw. I mean, all children like to draw, I guess. Uh, so for me, it was just like, you know, a continuation of something I've been doing all along. Uh, and then from there, it developed into something more serious. And of course, when I was small, I had these very romantic ideas about what it meant to be an artist. I saw myself in this parade standing, like making landscapes and stuff like that, which has of course totally changed later on. But I think you could say that, that already back when I was a child, yes, I, 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 I had this notion that this is the direction I wanted to take. A lot, really a lot of different artists, uh, but to mention a few, I would say, and where I would say you can actually see it in some of my work, Bastian Ara, the Dutch uh, artist, uh, has been very influential on me. Paul McCarthy, the American uh, artist, has also influenced me a lot. And then if you go back in time, of course, uh, Neusachlichkeit, uh, Otto Dix, uh, Rudolf Schlitter, uh, and so on has also meant a great deal, in, in particular when you look at my paintings, uh, they've been very influential. Also, there are uh, the outsider artist Henry Dodger, uh, who's been uh, very influential on me, in particular in, in, in regard to my drawings, uh, uh, but he's not the only one. Uh, so, I mean, I could make a very, very long list, but those are actually some of the few artists that I would like to, to mention, just to, to make a long story very short. Uh, a retrospective uh, exhibition uh, is very interesting, uh, in particular the, the present one, right now, because for the first time I think I actually uh, realized that being an artist is also, in a sense, going on a journey. That all of a sudden I can see the development from my early pieces and to the pieces that I'm doing now. Uh, and when you start seeing that, that's actually when it becomes really interesting because before that, I was, uh, I mean, I work in a lot of different medias. I do videos, I make sculptures, I make paintings and drawings and installation works. So it can seem a little bit confusing when you just see my exhibitions on a work to work basis. But now seeing them all together like this, I can see actually the connection between the different works. I can see that it's a journey that I'm on, that I'm actually in a sense constantly dealing with the same subjects. Uh, and I think it's really uh, nice and it's really uh, interesting for me also and hopefully also for whomever else comes to see the exhibition that all of a sudden it becomes clear that even though the works are very different they are in a sense all trying centered around the same subjects. Uh, uh, children and childhood uh, it's very interesting, I think, uh, because uh, on a cultural and historical perspective, uh, the way we deal with children, the way we actually see childhood, very much uh, reflects uh, the ideals and the values that uh, we regard as positive uh, right now. And by going back historically, and looking at how uh, childhood was perceived like 100 years ago, it also tells us quite a lot about what was the values, what was the ideals of that period. So I think it's, uh, in a sense, it's, it's kind of like a mirror that reflects uh, the, the values of the time. 
so in that way it becomes kind of like a thermometer uh, that I use to try to, uh, to uh, comment on different ideas that I find interesting uh, right now. Uh, also in a more general perspective, not just in regard to children in childhood, but, but like society as a whole. So uh, in that sense you could say that uh, my interest in, in childhood uh, is maybe not so much uh, based on an interest in the specific individual child, uh, but much more in an interest in the way we view children and childhood uh, and what that says about us. Uh, I, I, it, it started, I've always been interested in, uh, it's a combination of my interest of, in the theatre of the absurd, Samuel Beckett, uh, Ionesco, but also an interest in uh, slapstick comedy of uh, the uh, 20s and 30s, like Buster Keaton, Laura and Hardy, uh, Harold Lloyd and, and so on. Um, it's always, uh, I mean, I've been, been very fond of both uh, uh, slapstick comedy since I was a child and uh, the theatre of the absurd since I was like a teenager where I was really like, I uh, had a big shock the first time my school class was taken to see uh, the bald-headed uh, Chantreuse uh, by UNESCO. It was like, you know, a revolution for me because uh, I didn't know that you could do theatre like that at the time. I thought theatre was boring and all of a sudden I was actually laughing in the theatre and I always, almost felt ashamed about it. And um, later on, when I started work as an artist myself, I, I had these uh, ideas, or I, I was thinking about uh, what is the possibility of the artist today to make a profound statement? What is the ability of art today to actually communicate anything at all? Uh, especially when you take into consideration that the big ideas or the big histories, as uh, the philosophers say, they are gone. So you, it's like you do not have this kind of like guarantee that you are talking from the same point of view as the people who are coming to see what you are doing, which means you may actually be talking into thin air, mm -hmm. which is also very much what the uh, uh, what the Samuel Beckett and uh, Ionesco is is the issues that they are dealing with in what they are doing in a theatre place. Uh, and then I got the idea that, okay, I wanted to say something like that, I wanted to talk about that. And I got this idea, okay, if you see like an old slapstick comedy and you see somebody getting a cake in the face once, then it's funny. If you see it happen twice, then it's maybe still funny, but if it keeps going on like over and over and over, like 50 times, then it stops being funny and then it starts being something else. And I was very interested in trying to find out what that something else was. So that was the beginning of my interest in, in, in failure. Uh, this kind of like, you know, slapstick kind of failure. Uh, but I am also interested in like the fall uh, as a kind of failure. Uh, and the fall is coming out of my uh, idea that, uh, you know, uh, when this kind of like uh, spiritual uh, fundament or what do you call it, uh, uh, ground that, that you're standing on, when that disappears, like if you believe in God and all of a sudden you cannot believe in God anymore, then it's a bit like somebody is dragging the carpet from underneath your feet and you're hanging, floating freely in the air uh, and you have to try to find your feet again and that's very difficult. And that's also the kind of uh, uh, fall and failure that, that really is at, at the center of of my work. Well, uh, I wouldn't say that it's the most important work because I think that would be degrading the other works in a way. Uh, so, so I think, but I think what what I really like about this Wunderkind uh, that's in the background is that it is uh, in a way encapsulating very nicely a lot of the things that I'm trying to say in a lot of the other works in a very simple way. That uh, if 
we could use the allegory of language, it is spending less sentences saying some of the same things that is being said with more sentences in some of the other works. Uh, I, I really can't tell you. I, I like to work with them all. And I like to actually be able to move from one material to the other. It's a bit like, you know, instead, instead of living in, in one small room, you have a very big flat with a lot of different rooms. And whenever you get sick and tired of being in one room, you can go to the next. And uh, that's what I like about working in different materials. Also, sometimes, you know, it's like when you get a visual idea for work, you, you can see, okay, this kind of idea would be right to make, for making a, a drawing. Whereas another idea would fit much better with doing a video or a sculpture. So it gives you uh, far more possibilities, of course. Uh, and it, it also kind of like uh, makes it uh, less boring, I guess you could say, being an artist. Because you can go to your studio and say, okay, maybe I've been doing like, you know, say, 10 paintings. Now I want to try something else. <laughs> so, so it's always it's a way of getting uh, variation, but most important, it's a way of finding the right way of of, uh, of presenting the idea, uh, the most precise way.